one of the initiatives of um, the Futures Camp is to um, have a role model attached to um, the group that's um, in all the different venues. Um, so, for example, in um, Cairns, where I was a couple of weeks ago with the women, it was Tracy Golden um, for the girls' group. And for the, the lads today, we've got Eddie Oppenham. Okay? All of you know who Eddie is, no doubt. Um, Eddie's probably not going to spend a great deal of time um, talking. He would probably prefer to ask questions. It may be of a technical nature. Um, it may be of a tactical nature. In other words, it might be about pressing. It might be about a certain skill. Um, it might be about um, how has it got to where he is now. Um, what are the benefits of playing overseas? Um, so there's a myriad of different questions you might want to throw at him. But I think it's, it's um, well worth you having the opportunity to speak um, to Eddie now. Um, and hopefully um, we can start off with a, with a question from the floor. Who's got one? Yep. Training program. Uh, what sort of stuff do you do off the field? Like gym, track? Yeah. Um, well, in Perth, um, it's, it's quite a good setup. Um, Rick likes us to do individual sessions, so probably I'm not experienced doing them. I guess that much. But when we've got a bit of time on our hands, we'll have um, probably three group sessions a week plus a corner session and then um, and then you have to do one or two individual sessions so if you want to work on something a bit obscure like a backhand uh, back stick pass across, <coughs> across the circle um, little overheads or really specific goal shooting then you have to sort of do that on your, on your individual time so you have to develop extra skills basically and, um, if, if you grab five or six guys to come and with turf with you if you want to do some tackling, you know, you, you just have to work around it yourself. But then there's probably three group sessions, a <coughs> session, a couple of gym sessions and a, and, um, a couple of individual sessions. So it's not it's not over packed, it's just a bit of stuff to get through on the week and we'll probably only have a Sunday off. Um, pretty much during a, a full week. Remember, you're all challenged, so don't think about one question you're going to ask. Well, maybe I'll just give a bit of a background on what, what's been happening in the last, for me, five or six years since I was, since I was your age. I don't know how old you all are individually, but I'm 24 now, and um, probably six years ago I was in the Junior World Cup, which I don't know if everyone's the right age, but I'm sure some of you are aspiring to the next one. Is that correct? So, um, that was 2005 Junior World Cup for me. My first year of AHL was in 2005, and I was I was quite nervous playing that that year. Um, I hadn't been involved in many junior camps, or I hadn't done any. There wasn't any training like this. What you guys are doing, so first I think that's a good opportunity for you at the moment. And <clears throat> so I was quite a young fellow. I was I was picked in the Junior World Cup that year, and then. Um, during my second year of AHL was when I really started getting a lot of confidence. That was after the Junior World Cup. Um, so early 2006 and I really started to, to grow a bit and get my confidence and that's when I was picking the Australian team. Um, where I didn't play a lot to be honest in 2006. I probably only played about 8 to 10 games. So that was a pretty long year of pretty much just training in Perth and I was taken, I was withheld a bit from a few track, few group sessions and I was into the gym an extra session to most of the other guys because I was quite small and quite young and that I think helped not not with getting stronger but just I think most of you will be in the gym but getting my technique and everything sorted for when I really want to do the heavier weights so that 2006 was about that and then um, from 2007 I really got got the chance to cement myself in the team and, and the last few years I'm sure everyone's <clears throat> been kept up to date with when Rick's taken over and he's been really good and good as probably giving you the guys the same message so um, tactically, technically if anyone has any questions about what you've learned this week um, I'd like to think that I'd be in a pretty good position to answer um, going through some of the pressing things and because we've come a long way in the last two years about our on-field structures and our pressing and positioning and that sort of thing, I've got a pretty good
good wealth of knowledge about how we should be playing or how I should be playing. It doesn't always work out that well. But so if anyone wants any questions about firstly selections, um, even gym training, what I've done off the field, playing in Holland, European styles, all that sort of thing, then I'm happy to answer anything and perhaps elaborate a bit better on, on what you want to hear rather than me saying stuff that you don't want to listen to. What do you do in, in Holland <coughs> well, when you're not playing hockey in? Sort of, you know, how, how do you kill the time? Yeah, uh, not that much. We train in Holland probably a lot of people work and study, so our sessions are at 7, 8 o'clock at night even. And they like to train for two hours at a time, two and a half hours at a time, really drag it out. I don't know why, but that's their thing. Um, so I study a bit online through an online university. Um, but it doesn't take up too much time. The rest, living in Amsterdam is pretty good. I just jump on a bike and explore the city and do a bit of tourist stuff. So I think that's been really good for me because when you go on a trip, you don't see you don't see anything outside of your hotel, or your hockey room. So. so how much time is spent um, sort of back in the hotel, looking at opposition teams, and how much time is, is it these tactics versus sort of on Park with Rick. Yeah, Rick, I think, has gone away a bit from in the past. We did a lot, a lot, a lot of looking at the other teams, and whilst we still do that a lot, it's more focused on looking at our individual game. So <coughs> we would go to a tournament a week early, and we'll be given things like a task to there'll be groups of five or six, and you have to pick out so if we're playing India the first game of the tournament. We'll, Everyone gets a game against India from the last four years. So Australia versus India at the Con Games, and then Australia versus India at the World Cup, Australia versus India and Rockhampton in 2004, for instance, something like that. So you've got to pick out little um, clips about how they play, just their general tactics about against us specifically, what they do. So we do do a lot of that sort of thing. Um, so what sort of challenges have you got? Like you're obviously in the leadership group of the Kookaburras. Um, what's your role with the Kookaburras in particular with leadership? Oh, yeah, I, it's, it's not, I don't think it's really, really important to have that title as a leadership, but I think as long as you have a few people, um, I guess just providing a good, not a role model, but some, some good training ethic, and I think that's the most important thing because with the Kookaburras now, we're trying to get well, I guess any good team tries to get a team full of leaders. So Rick really pushes that, that the leadership group's there, yes, that's going to do the training and allocating times and more that sort of thing. And, but if you have a team full of leaders, then everyone's pushing each other. So you don't have one captain um, dictating everything and just providing examples. You want to follow everyone, so it doesn't matter who you are. That's, I think that's... But in terms for me, then we will have we'll have a couple of leadership meetings, on just about general things and maybe about a few issues or how to resolve things or just doing the planning, day to day schedule. Of, are we too tired to train? What do you want to do with training? Mm -hmm. uh, if you were to give, um, imagine back when you were at this age group, um, what would you say to these guys now about? You had to pick three things that um, they should really value. Um, what would it be? Oh, I think I think just to listen as much as you can. Um, it's so it's, it's easy to say that, but it doesn't. You know, I, I get I guarantee everyone everyone in this Australian team. If you said, was there a time when you probably didn't listen to someone when you maybe should have or. I bet everyone would say yes, and for me, yes as well. So that's really important. Um, just to take your opportunities, so everyone's in a good spot now. Um, just to keep pushing forward your, your case and keep training, playing well, and one more is have one, but that'll do. Uh, what sort of focus do you have on like, diet and nutrition and stuff during the year and also during the tournament? Uh, yeah. For me personally, um, I, I don't I don't have a strict diet or anything in particular like that. Um, 
I think it is important in in some for some people. Um, I'm generally pretty fit, and I don't think it, it doesn't make too much difference for me. But I could probably be a lot better at it. But I think some people really have to have a strict diet, and if, you, if you're not fit, then <coughs> I don't know if it's from your diet or your lifestyle or training hard. But no matter, what, it's going to show up in training or not necessarily the beep test. But if you can't keep up in some of the drills and we wear the GPS as even at training, so if you're doing less running than everyone else, that shows up. But yeah, for me, the nutrition is, I don't know, I probably should, probably, I probably should <laughs> be a bit more. Can, Eddie, were you always confident of your ability to get to where you are now? Because um, often young guys think that everybody who plays for Australia has always been very confident about their ability. Yeah. Uh, yes and no. Um, I always thought that I'd, I had a chance to do it, but um, I don't know, yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't always work as, as as you want it. But I always thought I would have a chance. I just thought that, that my ability would be if I worked hard enough that I'd have a chance. But yeah, I don't know, it's a tough one because it's at the, there are times where you lose a bit of confidence and you and you're not sure. If, you are going that well and you kind of look at yourself and go, well, maybe, a, maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was, you know what I mean? Yeah. How do you, how did you, when you're thinking that way, how do you reassure yourself that you do have the capacity to play the level you think you can? Um, there, there, there are times when um, the coach, you might have a meeting and the coach might just tell you, like, well, you know, these guys are here and you're down here, so you're with this group here, this is the team up here, so, and that happens and then you sort of have to just, yeah, confidence wise, I don't know how you get it back exactly, but I think just training hard and, yeah, it's, it's, I haven't experienced not being fit or injured that much, so I think that probably be the hardest, talking to some other guys, um, but for me, yeah, I just, I just went back to what, what I did well and I trained harder and tried to grow it. Um, yes, I do, but it's not for everyone. And I think you have to pick the right time um, in your career to do it. So, for those who don't know, I went straight after the Olympics in 2008. And I was only 21, which is quite young, I think, to go play overseas. But Oh, I have benefited from it, and after three years now, it's probably I've probably had enough. So, like I said, it's not for everyone, but I would recommend trying to go. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't have done it if I wasn't if I hadn't played a couple of years in the Australian team. So, if you're pushing for selection or you're playing AHL and you're around the mark and you think you're in the development squad, um, I probably wouldn't suggest doing it unless. Unless the coach had said there was a real benefit, but you mentioned uh, you were getting guesses and stuff. How many days do you run the game? Um, we so we rotated a fair bit, and I'll probably play 50, 50 minutes or just a bit over, and probably about ten k, I think. So we have on the GPS we have uh, total distance, which probably isn't that important. And then we have metres per minute, which is how many metres you run per minute. Um, and then how much you're running in a high intensity. So those are some of the things that we look at. I don't know. I think it's probably about 150, 160 metres per minute. It's going, going along quite well. Thank you, Christian. Um, uh, could have said before about versatility, you know, being able to play like, every single position uh, in the team. If you, do you find it harder playing a defensive role than an attacking role? Um, uh, no, I don't. Because I, when I was young, I played a lot of right half, and I played a lot as a defender. And I actually probably didn't play hardly any games as a, as a striker to play the Australian <coughs> team. So then I learnt that role. But I've all, always known my defensive role. And that was something I wanted to say. Thanks for reminding me. Is, about the versatility, I think 
no matter what position you play, then I think now, defensively, and we see it in footy, most guys watch footy, that you talk, they talk about those forward roles and keeping the ball in, so you can't have, you can't have forwards anymore that are just not, not willing to defend or not willing to, to keep the ball in, because we press so much. If our left wing just gets dribbled around every time, then the whole thing falls down. So it's going away from the versatility a bit, but I sort of make that point because it's quite important. Yeah, well, at the moment, most of this year we've been in Tassie, but um, over the last five or six years, only only probably month of summer and a week here and there, so not that much. And then the rest of my time was spent in Perth or or in Holland. So the season in Europe goes from um, September to December, and then we have December, January off, and then it goes from February to about May, June. So the last five years, the only time I've been spending back here has been probably a month, six weeks in, in the Christmas period. Just so in terms of the future, have you got an idea of what you're going to do post hockey? Um, and are you in the process of doing it? We're just saying, I oh, know I'm concentrating on hockey thousand percent at the moment, and when I finish my career, I'll then think about the next part of my life. Yeah, a little bit, but a little bit to which one? Just for this. Yeah, I, I'm trying. I'm, hopefully, I'll just finish my degree um, by the time I finish, and I'm not too fussed about um, what, what happens degree? in in my communications degree. So I'm not too fussed what happens through the next. I mean, if I finish when I'm thirty, that's six, seven years away. So as long as I've got something, I'm really. I'd like to have that finished by the time I finish hockey. So that it's a easy transition. Sometimes you just think, oh, I just want, I just want to go to my house and unpack all my bags and just sometimes have a job to go, to go to every day, nine to five. You know, sometimes it, it does sound nice because you know exactly what you're going to do and you can just sort of settle down for a while. So it can get tough, but um, <coughs> no, then I'm still coping with it for a To be honest, so I, I can imagine when guys start having families and stuff, it can get hard. Like when it's 30s, but. So, have you found 2011 what you now in Hobart? Um, is it a surprise to you that you're actually in Tassie and not in Perth full time? Yeah. In the <coughs> yeah, it's a bit strange. Um, just not doing all that training in Perth because it, you get into a routine of doing the training and it is quite hard training. You do get really tired and it's really good, it's really enjoyable. So, I miss that a bit, but. Um, I'm glad I'm here because um, it's just saving me a bit of money of renting a house in Perth for the whole 12 months when I'm probably living in it for four or five months. Um, and just have a bit of time away from it because next year's going to be very full on. So, was the decision um, to sort of like let all the players go back to their states um, to try and keep people fresh? Was that? Um, I was, after the Com Games, which was October, we had just See you in February. Um, just keep your general fitness up, but we've got a camp in February, so I'll see you there, pretty much. And then, uh, so that was a good break for everyone, the whole squad. And now I think it's slowly, individually, um, we just keeps it on an individual basis, so someone might have a different circumstance to someone else, so you might want some people training full time in Perth, but for me, um, he can see why it would be beneficial for me and good for me to come here. Um, but, yeah, I, I can't wait to hopefully go on this European tour because I haven't played for Australia since October and I'm missing it a bit, so that'll be good. Okay, um, I'm sure we could, um, all want to thank Ed for his time this morning. He's obviously got a great game um, this afternoon for Tassie as well. So, Got a pretty, big, pretty busy program, so thanks Ed for um, giving us your time um, this morning and um, all the best 